Hello my friends, it is day three of my week of videos. So if you have not watched this week yet, I hit a thousand subscribers this week, which is super exciting. It's just such a huge milestone for me. Just, I don't care, you know, to have tons of subscribers, but it just makes me feel like all my hard work is paying off and you guys enjoying the content that I'm making for you. And so I wanted to give it back to you 1000 amazing people by doing a week of videos. So I have seven videos coming out this week and usually I do two to three videos. So this is gonna be a really fun week. I hope that you'll join me all week for my videos that will come out every day this week at 7 a.m. So don't miss as those come out. And today's video, I'm going to share with you a Q&A that I asked over on my Instagram, which go follow if you are not already. And we are talking about my pregnancy. Um, I've been pregnant a few times, but I'm particularly talking about this pregnancy um, and I have several chronic illnesses, as you probably know. And so we're talking about pregnancy with chronic illness and just pregnancy in general, pregnancy as a mama, all those things. We're going to answer your questions today. All right, you guys, let's get started. So the first question I have is, has it been crazy different? Um, with these two pregnancies. So I had a few different questions in the same kind of, um, same kind of question, which is how does this pregnancy compare to my other pregnancy? Um, I think particularly with my daughter. And then some people asked, how does my pregnancy, which is now a boy compare with my first pregnancy? Um, well, my first full, uh, 39 week pregnancy, um, which was a girl. And how do those two compare? So this one's been harder. My body has not been loving this pregnancy. I feel like my symptoms have been a lot worse. Um, I've also had a toddler to keep up with, which does not make things easy. I was also told I would not be getting pregnant. And so I got a puppy a week before I found out I was pregnant. So <laughs> yeah, it's been crazy. Um, I've definitely felt a lot worse this pregnancy. My fatigue's been worse, my nausea's been worse, my food aversions and my, just like every symptom that there is, has been a lot worse this pregnancy. Um, but besides that, I mean, I don't really see a huge difference. I did see a difference between um, my daughter and my son. Oh, it's weird to say my son so exciting. Anyway, um, my daughter and my son on their ultrasounds. My daughter usually was pretty calm in the ultrasounds. My son is like crazy and jumping around and he's, he's just going crazy in my ultrasounds, which is scary because my daughter is as, um, now a 16 month old is kind of crazy and runs around and never stops. And I hang out with other friends who have kids her age and they seem so much more calm than her and she's just like always going crazy and then my son in the womb is already crazy so we'll see how I handle these two kids together but I'm very very excited so overall I'd say really just the symptoms are worse and harder I still have oh and one more thing I just remembered is my belly is definitely growing faster which I've heard is very common with your second pregnancy I feel like I'm way bigger way faster with this pregnancy um, so it's been honestly kind of fun because I love the pregnancy belly I just think it's fun to have a little belly and especially like once people know I'm pregnant it's just nice to just to show it I like it anyway so that's kind of the big differences with this pregnancy and my daughter the next question is um, oh that was the same question there's a lot of that question. Um, are you worried about future babies and getting pregnant again? No. So I have no idea how many biological kids we'll have, but we definitely want to um, be foster parents one day. So if these are my only two biological par kids, <laughs> parents, if these are my only two biological kids, I would be 100% happy. Like I feel so blessed as is, especially with the way my body is like the fact that I've been able to have two successful pregnancies is insane um, I just feel extremely blessed with where I'm at today um, would I have more biological yeah totally um, but I don't know what the Lord will bless us with um, but I'm open to anything I really am I'm open to adoption I'm open to foster care <laughs> I'm adoption uh, oh, I'm open to just these two I I'm just I'm open to all of it and so honestly it's just 
whatever happens, happens. I, that's how I believe life works and it always works out in the best way for, for me and for my family. So, um, I'm not worried about it. If I'm supposed to get pregnant again and have another baby, then it's going to happen. Anyway, next question, how is SIBO with pregnancy? So I want to do a whole video on this, but I want to wait till I've gone through all the trimesters. Um, at least I'll probably make it during my third trimester. Um, but SIBO is rough all the time, anytime, and whether they're pregnant or not. But it's harder when I'm pregnant because it's a lot harder for me to eat good <laughs> when I'm pregnant. Like, it's really hard. And we're going to talk about food in a minute. A lot of questions about food. But yeah, SIBO, my stomach has been hurting. I definitely get bloated still, but whatever, like I'm pregnant, so I don't really care about the bloat unless it like hurts. It's kind of annoying, but honestly, SIBO is like my, my chronic illness that bothers me the least because to me, like a stomach ache, bloating, those symptoms, they don't stop me from living my life normally, um, except when I'm running to the bathroom. But as a stay-at-home mom, I feel like I can still do the things I need to do. I still have energy. Um, so SIBO doesn't disrupt my life as much as my other chronic illnesses. Um, my chronic illnesses that cause my blood not to circulate and um, fatigue and all of that, that makes it really hard to live a normal life. So honestly, I feel like SIBO is just a part of my life forever. I don't feel like I'm ever gonna get rid of it. I just am kind of used to always having a stomach ache and it's probably worse during pregnancy because I don't eat as well. But I do remember with my daughter that as pregnancy progressed, it got better and better. So I'm hopeful that that happens with this pregnancy. So far, it's about the same. I mean, it's worse because I'm not eating as good, but it's about the same as it would be if I was eating the same things when I'm not pregnant. But I'm hopeful that through the rest of my pregnancy, it will get better. Hopefully that answers your question. Okay, um, next question. Okay, next question, POTS and pregnancy, and I have videos on this every trimester. I'm doing a video about POTS in my pregnancy, so I have my first trimester, and POTS is up right now, so I'll link that down below, and then stay tuned for my second and third trimester. Um, but I'll tell you, kind of just the main thing about POTS and pregnancy is that you have more blood in your system, so it actually helps you to feel better. Um, my POTS symptoms seem better. I still treat my POTS. I still wear compression socks every day. I still do all those things, but I have more blood in my system. So overall, I think my symptoms do get better when I'm pregnant, which is really nice. Um, but for more information, again, watch those videos where I go a lot more in depth and I'm doing one every trimester for POTS because there's a lot that goes along with POTS. So, um, next question are, why aren't you still doing AIP? So if you didn't hear, I was on the AAP diet, the autoimmune protocol diet, which is a paleo diet, but much more strict. It cuts out a lot of things. <laughs> it is very strict. Um, there's not a lot of things you can eat, but I have an autoimmune disease that affects my thyroid. And I think that it made it harder for me to get pregnant. I think it made it harder for me to stay pregnant with my other pregnancies. So. I was on that diet and I was told that I would not be able to get pregnant again, that my ovaries look terrible, that, yeah, that I wouldn't be able to get here. But I went on this diet, honestly felt the best I ever had while I was on that diet. I was on it for a couple months and then I got pregnant. So I did my best to stay on it. I was very strict on it up until eight weeks of pregnancy. So on my eighth week of pregnancy, I went into the doctor and my baby boy was looking super good. Um, everything looked healthy. All of my other pregnancies that ended, ended really early, like around five weeks. So I didn't feel worried about losing this baby. And I talked to my husband and we kind of made a plan. We were like, is it worth it to stay on? Because I was getting really miserable with eating AIP. Uh, most of the stuff on AIP really grossed me out. I was having a hard time eating anything. It was almost like if I didn't get off that diet, I wouldn't eat anything because I was just so nauseous all the time and I just couldn't stomach those foods and I didn't have the energy to make those foods. So it was really hard. So honestly, the biggest thing is I prayed about it. I prayed about it, just tried to ask God if it was okay for me to get off it. And my husband and I both felt peace about it. Um, 
and so we decided that I was just gonna do gluten free because from the research I've done that's the biggest thing that impacts the thyroid um, and so yeah I decided to just do gluten free because I'd passed that point of when my other pregnancies ended I wasn't too nervous about that um, now I'm well over 12 weeks pregnant and so I'm not too worried um, about a miscarriage anymore. Of course it can still happen, but I don't think it would happen for the same reason my other ones happened. When I was pregnant with my daughter, I had no idea what was wrong with my body, so I ate anything and everything, <laughs> and she turned out just fine. So um, anyway, we felt good about getting it off AIP. It's a really, really hard diet. I don't think it's a diet that anyone should do forever. Um, in fact, even after I'm done having kids, I think I'll do it for a few months at a time when I'm having flare-ups, when I'm not feeling good, when I want to balance my hormones. Do it for a few months, balance things, and then get off it again because it's just it's too strict to do forever. Um, I personally feel best with just like a straight paleo. That's probably like the best overall diet where it's not like um, so strict that I can't eat anything, but it also helps a lot of my symptoms. So anyway, yeah, does that answer your question? Um, what diet did you eat pregnant? Just talked about that. Um, what do you do? Oh, how do you do it and keep up with the toddler? So I don't know if that means like, how do you do all the things, but I don't do all the things. <laughs> I am, uh, I feel like I've been so lazy this pregnancy. Like the first mm, 10 weeks, I seriously just watched TV all day long and my daughter just played around me. Like literally that's what happened. And I tried not to throw up. So what I would do is I'd <laughs> lock her in the living room with me so I would like turn on a podcast or a show for me to just like get my mind off the pain and the awful symptoms that I was experiencing and I would just lay down and I'd lock her and the puppy in the living room with me by putting our ottoman, like we have this little opening um, to our like kitchen and the rest of our house and I would just kind of like leave her in there so she wouldn't run away because she likes to run and I would just lay down and she would kind of play on around me. My husband calls it like the lion and her cubs, like where the lion mom just like lays there and the cubs just like jump around her. That's basically what we did the first 10 weeks. So it was really, really hard. Um, now that I'm feeling a little better, I try uh, two times a week to get out of the house with my daughter. So we got a pass to like a local um, children's museum that we go to a lot and then we go to the library um, we go grocery shopping so I try to just like get out of the house um, my goal is to do it once a day I'm still not quite to that point with my energy level but hopefully eventually we'll get there once a day right now I'm going about three times a week um, to something and I also go to the gym where she goes to the daycare so I'm trying to get her out a little bit more and just like do a little bit more with her. So that's kind of how I've done it so far. I have a video on my channel um, called How to Be a Good Mom with Chronic Fatigue. If that's up already, when this video is up, I'll link it down below. If not, watch out for that video when it comes out. Um, the next question is how many kids do you want? And I actually talked about this in my assumptions video. Maybe I talked about this here too, I don't know. I have no idea. I did talk about this here. Are you worried about future babies? Yeah, we talked about this. So yeah, I'm up for whatever the Lord has in store for me. Um, do, how do you afford a baby with your medical bills? And this is getting kind of long. Let's see, do I have any more? Let's just finish with this last question and I'll try to answer the rest of the questions on my Instagram. How do you afford a baby with your medical bills? So I really need to do some videos about how we budget and afford things because we've been on one income basically our whole marriage and I talked about this little my assumptions video so you can go watch that um, but if you're interested in videos about how we afford things how I afford to eat organic how I afford all my medical bills how I afford my kids I think I just need to do a whole video on it so how about let's just wait because I could go into so much detail um, but I do follow a budget and I'm pretty strict with my budget. I have a whole binder right here, actually. It's my budgeting binder where I budget everything. I do side jobs to help bring in a little extra income for my family. Um, I have a little activewear business. If you want to support it, there's a link down below. Um, but yeah, I just try to bring in a little extra money and then I try to budget. Um, so yeah, I'll make some videos on that. If you're interested, let me know below. I hope that this pregnancy Q and A was helpful for you, especially if you're wanting to get pregnant with some of the chronic illnesses I have, because it can be hard and it can feel like, how am I supposed to do this? I don't even know. 
um, I feel extremely blessed to have this baby <laughs> growing. Like I, I can't even tell you how many doctors told me that this was not available to me and I feel like the Lord has just blessed our family so much with this baby and just, I don't know, can't get over how amazing it is to be a mama to this little baby, to my current daughter and to whatever future babies the Lord will bless us with. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the rest of this week as I finish up my seven days of videos to share with you and thank you for being a part of this community. So I hope you have a beautiful day. I love each and every one of you. Thank you.